in First Timothy chapter six, verse three, it's, it, it says this: If anyone advocates a different doctrine and does not agree with sound words, those of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine conforming to godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing. But he has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words, out of which arise envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of depraved mind and deprived of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. The Apostle Paul continues here in his letter to the young pastor Timothy. In these verses, Paul talks about the person who advocates or teaches different doctrine. He talks about the person who teaches doctrine that does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about the person who, who teaches doctrine that doesn't conform to godliness. It seems that in the days of the Apostle Paul, there were some teachers going around to the various churches who were claiming to teach the gospel, who were claiming to teach biblical truths, at least they thought they were, but the truth is they were teaching a different doctrine altogether. The things they were teaching didn't agree with the words of Christ. The things they were teaching didn't conform to godliness as taught in the Bible. Well, what were they teaching? Well, it's hard to say for sure. We're aware of some of the false teachings in those days, but probably not all of them. There are probably several false doctrines going around at that time. But it's interesting that so soon after Christ had walked on the earth that there were already false teachers distorting what Jesus had taught. Peter, Paul, and John all warned about false teachers. Peter, uh, he said false teachers would be rising up in the churches and bring in destructive heresies. And in 2 Peter 2, 1, it says, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. There's always been an opposition to Christ from the world. There's always been a hostility towards Christ from sinful man. Romans 8, 7 says, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it's not even able to do so. And so there's this opposition from the world to Christ that's always been there. And one way that this opposition shows up is through false teachings. These false teachers would either deny Christ's teachings or deny something about Christ himself. And that's been going on ever since the church, the early church started. Let me give you a little bit of an example of, of what some of this was about. There was one false teaching that came into the early church that said that Jesus Christ was not a real man. They said he was God. They didn't deny that. They saw all of his miracles. They knew he rose from the dead. So they acknowledged that he was God. But these false teachers, they went around to the different churches and while they said that Jesus is God, they said he wasn't a man. He only appeared as a man, like an illusion or an apparition. And the name of this false teaching, for those of you who like history and theology, the name of this false teaching was called docetism. D-O-C-E-T-I-S-M. Docetism. These false teachers went around saying Jesus wasn't really a man made of flesh and blood. He only appeared that way. And so the apostle John addressed those very false teachers about that particular doctrine. In 2 John 1, 7, John said, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. So John said, all you teachers who are denying that Jesus is a man, you're the Antichrist. It's a seriously false teaching. Interesting that even in the days of the Apostle John, there was already that many false teachings going on that Jesus wasn't even a man, didn't even come in the flesh. There was another false teaching that showed up shortly after just a little time after. And this one was just the opposite of docetism. It said that Jesus was a man, 
but that he wasn't God. This false teaching said that Jesus was a created being, that he did not exist from eternity, that he was not God the Son. He was the Son of God, but not, not God himself, not deity. This teaching came from a man named Arius, and it was called Arianism, and this teaching is still around today, only instead of calling it Arianism, we call it the Jehovah Witnesses. It's still going on today. The Arians and the Jehovah Witnesses don't believe that Jesus eternally existed as God the Son. They believe instead that there was a point in time where God created him, that Jesus is a created being. And of course, this is false. And this false teaching was causing so much trouble in the church that a special council was formed in 325 A.D. in the town of Nicaea. And it was at this council that they formed what we know today as the Nicene Creed. How many of you heard of the Nicene Creed? We, a lot of us have heard of that, haven't we? The Nicene Creed, it's a great creed. It declares the truth about Jesus, that he is both fully God and fully man. The Nicene Creed says this about Christ. It says, Jesus Christ is God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And so in the Nicene Creed, they, they affirm that Jesus Christ is God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. And it also affirms that he became fully man. And so Christian, you know this, but just to affirm it, Jesus Christ is both fully God and fully man. He is fully God and fully man. It's just interesting that there are already so many false te teachings in the church so, so shortly after Jesus had walked on the earth. It seems that wherever the truth goes, the enemy wants to send out lies and false teachings to distort that truth. And so Paul addressed these false teachers in our verses today. He said in 1 Timothy 6, Three, if anyone advocates a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words, those of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine conforming to godliness, he's conceited and understands nothing. And so Paul said these false teachers, they're conceited and they don't understand anything. Paul not only said that they're conceited and that they understand nothing, in verse 4, he says they have a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words out of which arise envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of depraved mind and deprived of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. And so these teachers were bringing in teachings that denied Jesus, that deny the teachings of Jesus, that deny godliness, Paul said they're conceited. In other words, they're puffed up with pride. They must have thought they really had the truth. But then Paul said they understand nothing. What a combination to be conceited and puffed up with pride because you think you're some great teacher and yet at the same time to know nothing of the real truth. Furthermore, Paul said these teachers had a morbid interest in controversial questions and that they had disputes over different words. And it's so true. Often you'll find someone who has a false belief or teaches something false. They tend to just have a morbid interest in controversial things. And they, they wrangle and, and fight over different words. In other words, instead of understanding the simple, plain truth of Scripture, they gravitate towards controversy. Paul said they caused envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicion, constant friction. So the Apostle Paul didn't have a lot of good things to say about these so-called teachers who taught doctrine that didn't agree with Christ. Now the King James Version has one more line at the end of these verses. It says, from such withdraw thyself. In other words, stay away from these false teachers. Well, it's hard to know all the different things these teachers were teaching, but one thing is clear. Whatever they were teaching, it was wrong. Whatever they were teaching, it was likely represented as the gospel, 
It was likely represented as biblical truth, but it, it clearly wasn't. It was a distortion of the gospel, a distortion of the scriptures. Paul was really concerned about this, and I mean, you can see why. He went on three missionary journeys. He went around establishing churches. And when he established these churches, he appointed elders and pastors. And he was teaching these people the truth of Christ and the truths of the Bible. And then as he goes around, other people follow around to these churches and starts bringing, start bringing in false teachings. And you can see how he would be so upset about this. Now, again, we don't know all the false doctrines that were going around, but we know some of them. There was a particular one I want to talk about for just a moment. There was another particular distortion of the gospel that Paul mentions and condemns. It was such a bad one. Paul had to write a letter about this. It occurred in the church of Galatia. Some so-called gospel teachers had come. And they went to the church of Galatia, and they started to teach a very distorted gospel. They said this, you must trust in Jesus to be saved, which that part was right. But they said that wasn't enough. And that's where they went wrong. They said that wasn't enough. They said you also had to do good works. They, they taught that trusting in Jesus plus good works will save you. Now, Christian, we know that Christians do good works, right? But we don't do good works to get saved. Rather, good works flow out of our faith in Christ. Good works are a result of getting saved. But these false teachers were saying in order to get saved, you must believe in Jesus and add good works. Particularly, they said you had to believe in Jesus and be circumcised. Believe in Jesus, plus add some Jewish rituals. When Paul found out about this distorted gospel, he wrote this letter. Listen to what he said. In Galatians 1, 6, he says this to the Galatians. I mean, imagine when they got this letter. Imagine when whoever the elder was in that church at that time got up and said, I'm going to read a letter to you from the Apostle Paul who established his church. Let's see what he says. And he starts reading this letter, and Paul says, I am amazed that you so quickly are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some of you who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we've preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we've said before, so I again say now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. Imagine when they heard that. Paul says here these false teachers are distorting the gospel. They weren't believing the simple truth that we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, plus nothing. They just, they just thought that wasn't good enough. You have to add some works Paul wasn't going to sit back and, and let that false teaching come into the church. So he said, if he himself, if he himself came in and gave you a different gospel, or even an angel from heaven, an angel from heaven appearing in your church, preaching a different gospel, let him be accursed. That's a powerful letter, isn't it? The Bible's very clear on false teachers. They are to be avoided. And so with that said, let me read our verse again. If anyone advocates a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words, those of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine conforming to godliness, he's conceited and understands nothing. Paul's basically saying, don't let people like this teach or preach in your church. Don't listen to people like this. Avoid them. So let's get practical. How do we follow these verses? Well, let's look at two ways this morning to apply these verses. Number one, we must know the truth well enough to recognize it when someone, to recognize when someone's teaching something false. And number two, we must avoid the false teacher. So let's look at these two points just for a few minutes. The first point, 
We must know the truth well enough to recognize when someone's teaching something that is false. There was false teachers in Paul's days in the early church, and there's false teachers today. It seems that Satan has his people going out into the world spreading a false gospel and distorting the truths of the Bible wherever the real gospel goes. So how can you avoid being deceived by a false teacher? The simplest and the most effective way is to be thoroughly grounded in the truth. If you're grounded in the truth yourself, it will be hard for someone to deceive you with falsehoods. If you're thoroughly familiar with the Bible, then something that sounds different will stand out. A person who knows their Bible really well, when they hear something different, it's like an internal alarm goes off. It's like a flag is raised. They hear something that's, that's off. And maybe they know it right away. Yep, I know that's off. But maybe there's just something that's a little off. But yet they know the word of God so much. They just know something's not right about this teaching. Might not even know what's wrong with what they're hearing. But it's like they've heard enough solid preaching. They've heard enough of their Bible that they just know something's wrong with this that they're hearing. It's like somebody who is a good musician, someone who plays a guitar, like we have these great guitar players here in this church. And they get so good at hearing how a guitar sounds when it's tuned up that if it's just one string is just a little too loose or just a little too tight and something is off, just a little teeny bit out of tune, these really good musicians, they're playing it and they just, no, nope, something ain't right, something ain't right. And they can go and they can tweak and they can make it just right. I don't know if I could do that, but these guitar players can do it because they're, they so know what it's supposed to sound like that if it's just a little bit off, they know it. A person who is thoroughly familiar with the Word of God, with the Gospel, when they hear something that's not quite right, they might not even know what it is, but they can pick up on it. Here's the important point. In order for a person to be able to pick up on a false teaching or a slightly distorted teaching, they do have to know the truth of the Bible quite well. If you don't know your Bible well, if you don't hear Bible preaching regularly, you are vulnerable to falling prey to false teachers. It's, and it's important to know the context of our verses today. Paul was talking about false teachers in the church. You're not automatically safe from false teachers because you're inside of a church. Indeed, that's where most of the false teachers are, inside of a church. And so if you're not grounded in the Word of God, you could be listening to a podcast. You could be listening to the Internet. You could be listening to a sermon and taking it in. You could be absorbed by it and be thinking, this is really interesting, this is really good, and not even know that you're listening to a false teaching. You see, there's no law against false teachers. There's no rules as to what can be taught or not taught in the, in the world of Christianity. There's no umpires listening to sermons and, and saying, you can't broadcast this, it's false. It doesn't work like that. Truth is, you can go online probably almost any day of the week, if not every day of the week, and find a false teacher because there's lots of them out there. There's plenty of people who distort the truth. Plenty of people who say just enough truth to sound legitimate, but just enough distortion and falseness to be a destructive heresy. And not only are there false teachers teaching and preaching online and in churches, you can walk into a Bible bookstore and pick up a book that's full of falsehoods and distortions. Just because a book is in a Bible bookstore doesn't make it true. Just because a book is in a Bible bookstore doesn't make it scriptural. The key to not being deceived by a false teacher is know your Bible well. Try to read it every day. Most of you probably do, but I'd encourage you to. Read your Bible every day, at least a little bit, and listen to solid preaching, and become so familiar with the truth that you recognize the distortion of the truth when you hear it. Indeed, become so familiar with the truth that you could even hear something that's untrue or distorted and not even right away know what it is. You just, you just sense instinctively something isn't right. And seriously, this actually happens when you're grounded in the Word of God, when you're grounded in the truth, 
when you just have heard it so much and you know it so well, sometimes you can hear somebody teaching and not even immediately know what it is that they said that's just not right, but you just sense it. You just know something about this teaching isn't right. Have you had that happen? Something about this teaching isn't right. And later on you figure it out. But I want to tell you, if that happens to you, trust your instincts. Because they're probably right. The bottom line. Know the word of God. Be absorbed in it. Listen to good solid preaching. Read good solid books. Let me go to the second point quickly. It says we must avoid the false teacher. That's the, that's the, the second point is we must avoid the false teacher. First one was not being taken in by false. The first way we talked about it is not being taken in by false teachings. Uh, just to not be taken in because you know the word of God is so good. The second, the second way that we apply our points today is just avoid the false teacher. Avoid them. Often false teachers become known after they teach for a while. People start to realize who they are. They realize that this person is distorting the scriptures. This person's a false teacher. Once you know that, stay away. But there's another way to look at this. You might not know who all the false teachers are. So get to know who the solid teachers are and stick with them. I know there's so many teachers and preachers out there, I couldn't possibly give you a list of all those who are good and all those who aren't, but ask your trusted brothers and sisters in Christ. Who do they listen to? Ask Christians who you know are solid, what books do you read? Who do you listen to? For instance, I can tell you, if you listen to R.C. Sproul, you are listening to good, solid preaching every time. I don't know how many of you guys have heard of R.C. Sproul, but I'd encourage you if, you, if you don't know who to listen to, turn on R.C. Sproul. If you read Charles Spurgeon, you're on solid ground. Stick with it. Stick with good, solid preachers and teachers and authors, and once you know someone is a distorter of the truth, avoid them. But if you know someone's good, listen to them. Now let me point out one more thing to help you identify a false teacher. As far as false teachers go, the Bible gives us another way to possibly recognize them. Verse 4 says this, but he has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words, out of which arise envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of depraved mind and deprived of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Often, often when there's a false teacher, his teaching is surrounded by controversy. There's not much controversy or disputes or any such things when you hear good, solid, biblical truth. But when you hear distortions of the truth, one hint that you may be hearing a false teaching is that there's so much controversy and strife around it. For instance, some of you may be familiar with the false doctrine called open theism. If you've been here for a while, you've heard me talk about it before. This is a false doctrine. It states that God does not exhaustively know the future. Rather, he goes through time as we go through time, not fully knowing what's coming next. The future is unpredictable, even to God. God does cause his prophecies to come true. He does arrange things as, as time comes, comes to pass. He arranges things and makes sure his prophecies come true. But there's so much that God doesn't know because man has a free will and he might make decisions that just throw God's plans off. So God has to be constantly adjusting because of man's free will. And because of this, not knowing the future and not knowing the decisions that man will make, God does the best he can at being God, and he sometimes makes mistakes. Does this sound anything like the God of the Bible? Not even remotely. But this is a doctrine that's taught in some churches. But if you heard this teaching, and you didn't know it was a false doctrine, and I think anyone should know that's a false doctrine, but if you heard this teaching and you didn't know it was a false doctrine, one clue would be this. It was surrounded by controversy and strife 
and even abusive language, it has caused much conflict in the churches. The Bible says regarding false teachers, they have a morbid interest in controversial questions, disputes about words, out of which arise envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, constant friction between men of depraved mind and deprived of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. And so if you're not sure if some teaching is false, if you're just not sure, well then look at how much conflict it generates, how much strife, how much friction it causes. See if there's abusive language because these types of things just seem to follow a lot of false teachings. Not always, but often. Sometimes there's conflict with true teaching as well, but not as often. So it isn't a fail-proof test, but it's often true. Another thing that you'll see a lot of times, a lot of times with false teaching, you'll get a sense that this is all about raising money. Not always, just little hints to look for. So false teachers tend to be surrounded by conflict and controversy and strife and friction, and they suppose that godliness is a means of gain. So let me conclude. Bottom line, there will always be teachers and preachers and people in general who will advocate different doctrines. Doctrines that will not agree with the sound teachings of Jesus, doctrines that will deny Jesus, doctrines that will deny godliness, doctrines that will deny the Bible. They're going to be here. They're going to be here until Christ returns. And so here's what you need to do. Know your Bible well. Know your Bible well. Know the gospel well. Know who are good preachers and avoid false teachers. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words today. We thank you, Lord, for these verses. Lord, help us to know your word very well. Help us to be grounded in the truth. Help us to love your word and just get it into our hearts. And Lord, help us to recognize that when we see something that's distorted and something that's not true and to stay away from these things. Lord, may our church always teach and preach the truth. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.